Hey, today we wrap up and dirty up the sci-fi console build. Let's go. Hey, 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 how's it going? Anthony Froer here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, today we wrap up the sci-fi console build. I think it's been three videos. We do the special effects, we do the lights, we do the weathering. We sort of button it up the fun stuff, right? To clean it up, to put in the details. So I'm very excited to share this with you. Um, we had a sponsorship with Algo Laser, which allowed us to do all the laser cutting to get this result, which I've never gotten before. Nice, clean lines. I do make it filthy, as you can see. <laughs> but definitely in the progress of the video, before I could do that, you could stop if that's your thing. But like I always say, I make these uh, for actual films. So with films, it's more about what the camera sees, so it's a little heavy handed, but I got another sci-fi short coming up, so I needed to make this. Don't have a budget for the short, what I always preach on this channel, wrote a book about it, check out the book. So in the book, I go over this whole process of mine where I build sets and costumes and props when I don't have an actual shooting budget. And then when I do finally scrape together enough money or sort of align myself with some friends with common interests to make it, everything's ready to go. So check out that book, it helps the channel. You can also get it on Kindle. And if you're a subscriber, it's free. So check it out, links below. But anyway, so we're gonna get right into this. Um, it's mostly, again, this is more interesting to me, hopefully to you. It's about the fine tuning details. I'll see some things on there that I thought worked and in the 11th hour, I swap them out for something that's better. We do the illumination of the screens and we go through all that and then the weathering. So let's get into that. All right, right into the 3D printing. Uh, I printed these switches and then I did some knobs there you see off camera. I don't know why I didn't film them. But anyway, so we're going to make some molds. I don't think I've ever made molds on this channel. So I know I'm always making these sort of sci-fi consoles and doodads. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to make these knobs. I'm going to make these switches and I'm just going to mold them. And then I'll be able to make multiples for this. And then for future projects, I'll just kind of have these on hand, right? So we got the 3D print. So the first thing you want to do is get these nice and smooth, get these cleaned up since this is what we're going to take the impression from. Got some Mold Star, just basic, you know, two part silicone uh, mold making. So now we got to make a box. Now this is the exciting stuff. <laughs> make a box but this is actually very important because um it's not cheap to to buy the uh silicone so you wanna sort of make a custom box so that you're not wasting uh the silicone right you just want it to be what it needs to be not too much not too little like just right and then even though i do use a release agent uh packing tape is pretty good when you're doing all things like resin and silicone, um, it doesn't want to stick to that, which is which is a good thing. So I always build all my boxes, and, or rather line my boxes, and sort of silicone everything up. I'm making sure that you know that it's not going to spill out. You know, you take a minute here, you don't want any gaps, and um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm bantering here to try to fill time as I make a box out of tape. <laughs> but this is the process, right? It's all about sharing the process. Making a box out of packing tape. There you go. Not a bad way to spend an afternoon, though, if I do say so myself. And it's going to pay off because I'm going to have these forever. So now uh, I'm going to put it in the bottom. So this is just going to be a one-part mold. So we're just going to glue this um to the bottom there so that it doesn't float up once we put the silicone in there and these one part molds also are a lot of fun because they're very simple right it's not like you have to do the two separate parts and you know use clay so I use some mold release there and it's again it's just a two part the only difference that i find with these is are the work times you know if you want something that's going to set up fast or if you want something where you need to take your time because it's a little more complicated. Or in my case, whichever one's the cheapest. <laughs> so typically when I'm making a mold, maybe put a little color in there. 
I couldn't find my color. Not a big deal. Uh, but you do want to make sure you get it mixed up good, get all the bubbles out, um, scrape the sides, and then when you think you're done mixing, mix it again. So all pretty simple, right? It took me a while to get into this because, I don't know, I was intimidated by it, but, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Mix A with B, cover your thing, let it set overnight, and you got a mold. All right, and I had to make a little extra there off camera. Again, because you don't want to waste with that. So now, while that's curing, I got this joystick. I just 3D printed a little doodad. That's our logo. I don't even know what this logo means yet. I still have to decide. And then these are the little things that I find don't take me a lot of time and they add value. You know, you're barely going to track it. But I, I do believe that when you put those sort of things in your build, the little details, that's what really takes it to the next level. I think subconsciously, um, your brain, your eyeball brain senses the density and, the, and it translated at, as real. I don't know. You got to go with me on this. All right. So now I'm just making sure that these, um, these positives release well right you don't want to do all this again and, it, and it's sort of when you do these simple long processes it, it makes you better at your craft because you're the last thing you want is to have to do it all over again so here i'm just refixing the mold so that it's the same size with these in here because once we inverse the mold we still want to use that box to kind of house it keep everything together there i can tell it picked up all the detail so that's a success i'm, I'm inspecting it <laughs> I don't have my glasses on, so I don't know what I think I see, but you know, now I'm putting some isopropyl alcohol in there just to get rid of any funk. And then I figure, well, let me measure how much volume that is so I know much resin. And as you see by the puddle there, that did not work out. <laughs> and I've been having a blast with my air blaster there. I got my shop air. So now the resin itself that we're going to cast these things out of same thing it's just a two-part resin part a part b um this i picked up like at a joann's or like a michael's but again if you have a like a plastic store that's more cost effective or you can find stuff cheaply online i just sometimes get into the zone and i just run out and buy something rather than waiting when i know i could get it cheaper so here like the silicone we just want to make sure it's mixed up I got a little black in there. I give it a little smoky tint. I'm hoping that this works out so I don't have to paint these. Uh, I'm trying to match the color of what my final idea for the console is going to be. And spoiler, I think I get pretty close. So I end up not painting these, which is nice. So here I'm just getting every last drop, right? Stuff is liquid gold. And again, you don't want to do things twice. So uh, a, a more advanced way to do this is to use a vacuum chamber, and, and, you know, vacuum pots, but you know, you can just get rid of the bubbles with heat. So that's what I'm doing here. Again, I don't think I've ever covered this process on this channel before. So those of you who know, know, those of you who don't now, hopefully this is just showing you how simple it is and you always have extra. So I like to have these molds on hand. Um, just to pour out the extra so you can use it and have these little greeblies. So here, now I go onto my computer and I make these fake um, screens, right? So the idea is this is like a static uh, old like green CRT screen. And how I do this is, so you print it out on laser paper, just black and white, and then you put a gel over the front of it. And then we're gonna illuminate the back and it's sort of an easy special effect. So then it's going to give it the illusion of it's like an old CRT screen, you know, one of those old like computers. And the reason for doing that is, you know, I've done enough films where, yeah, you can in post add, add the screen, you know, do it digitally like an After Effects, but it, it's not as easy as you think. I, you could do it. It's not a big deal, but I like the idea of just in these shots where the screen it's not important what's on the screen 
rather than have to post like track it all and then mount something in and when the camera moves you have to make sure all that's right it's just make it you know and i I've used this technique in Wakener on like a wristband. I don't think I did a video on that. And it just sort of gives the illusion that it's a screen. And again, I'm going for like a, uh, my, my style is typically like a 70s style sci-fi. So this actually works nicely for that. So here I'm just kind of mocking it up. I'm making my templates. Uh, I'm not locking it in yet, but I, you know, measuring twice so you cut once so just make sure everything lines up so here um in the other episode i made this panel with these empty lights so here i have these copper fairy lights i really like these uh i use them for a lot of things because they have like seven or eight different animations they're very lightweight and they're pretty hardy so my idea is just to bring some kind of life to these buttons i think i put three lights per button right and i think there's like 90 lights on this wire and it's this copper wire so it just bends nicely it's like you know it's like you couldn't really do this with like a string of christmas tree lights you know those are inexpensive but it's just it's too cumbersome right or this i like you know i'm doing air quotes here fairy lights because it's very lightweight and i just find it works out for this now if you watch my film wakener in the background there's all these white panels that are flashing and on and off kind of like a 70s alien look and i achieved that with these fairy lights and here i'm just cleaning it up because even though i put three in each button i still had a lot of leftover and again to keep this cheap and simple i'm not going to rewire things i just put tape over the the ones that I didn't need <laughs> and then just covered them up and there you see that's just one of the animations like I said I think there's like seven and I'm gonna tone that down later so now I just want to bring to life um, some of these graphic details like fuel is going to be a moment in the script like I know at one point in the script or three points in the script they keep checking the fuel levels right so that's something that you know had to keep in mind when i was building this set piece so i need to make sure that it reads fuel and the camera is able to sell that so here i'm just putting paint in the engraving and then wiping it off right very simple very effective and then here off camera this is like the baseball cap you, this whole console needs a lid and for some reason i just never made that and i do it on camera it was one of those things in the 11th hour where you're like oh i need that and I just made it and I didn't hit record, sorry. So here I moved the operation into my living room because I wanted this to be clean and my shop is not clean. So here I'm placing in all the gel and the photocopies to make sure that everything is right. And then here just on Timu for like $3, I got one of these sound um, LED bars but there is like one single animation on there that's not voice activated and that um, I'm going to use to, to show the fuel. Now here, these are those light panels that I also got on Timu. These light panels are for um, for tracing, right? They're for art. You, you put a, uh, your picture on there and then you tape, uh, put a white paper on top of that and then you can trace and then I can imagine you could use these to look at slides. But anyway, they're very inexpensive and I use these to give the illumination. And then you, know, you see where we're at so far. Now I'm definitely gonna have to fix that little light spill at the bottom there, but that's a later problem. So now it's commitment time. Um, all the stuff on the, the panel where you sit, not the upright panel, is been laid out for weeks and weeks and I keep switching it up a little. But now it's time to commit and I'm going to have to glue everything down. And then there, that one uh, panel with the sliders on it, that's underneath what I'm gluing right now, that I made off camera too because I made one on camera that was sort of like the orange knobs there, but it wasn't working for me. So then in 11th hour, I just, with my, um, my laser, I cut that out and etched that out 
glued that together. It was the same process as the one I replaced, but just aesthetically, the other one wasn't working for me. And now I talk about this a lot too. You get to the point where it's like, all right, well, forever hold your peace. Like, this is what it is. And at a certain point, you just got to let it rip. <laughs> so here again, that's another piece that I redid. I realized that my first pass was a little too cliche like sci-fi graphics and instead I just went and did like straight like dash lines and uh, just kept it very simple for this final for this final pass and then here I am the unpainted um, rocker knobs and, and dial knobs because I think they fit the color that we cast them in as you see there I'll, I'll hit them with a little um, rub and buff probably just to bring them to life there's a little backstage of the final layout. Everything I had to tape in, use some zip ties. And this is like getting a little hectic. So I tried to make it as clean as possible. And then there, I'm just double checking that everything's on. Like I said, I know I had that light leak in the front, but that's an easy fix. There's the spaghetti wires. And now it's green. And it looks good. I think a lot of people would stop there, right? But again, for me, I like uh, dirtying it up. So I was watching uh, a sci-fi for all humanity or something like that on Apple. And they one of the ships crashed and all the screens were busted. And they were fixing the screens with this yellow-orange tape. And I was like, what the heck is that? And I looked it up and it's like a real thing that's heat tape. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So for sure, this this console and this film is way past its ex expiration date. And there for sure would be busted up, cracked uh, screens. So I thought that tape was awesome. Um, you see there, I have like the warning stickers on there. I get those from Timu as well. I try not to put the jokey ones in there so that people don't see. It just, you want to sort of just give the uh, impression of those stickers make it seem more industrial so here between each layers because now i'm in a hurry i've been working on this console for a month i'm just hair drying between the layers and then i put a coat of clear to seal it in and move on typically if i had time i would do each one of these steps a day but you know at a certain point it's like you know you gotta move on you gotta get move on and i know if i just left it you know, I want to get to it for another three. To, and it's like at a certain point, I just want the stuff wrapped up. So here, uh, this is just acrylic paint, black wash. I uh, just slather this everywhere and I go for the happy accidents. I'm just sort of blotting this off. Now, what I'm going for with this, I guess I should clarify, is do you know when you go into like, uh, like a, you know, like a very old family mom and pop gas station or like a muffler shop. And there's just all sorts of grease and grime all over everything. And it's like messy, but it's like they, it's organized. They know where it is. And it's just like, you know, that back bench of, a, of like a muffler shop. That's the look I'm going for in the whole ship. So this is going to have to match that. So here I'm doing this first pass. And again, you know, a lot of you, if you're making this for your basement man then or what you know, whatever, um, you just don't have to do this step, right? But this really is going to suit my uh, my art direction on this film. So this orange one, that's like the rust, and then the rotten stone and the nicotine spray. These just sort of dull things and. Like the dials start to go away. I like to do with these because they're like water-based. I like to do a heavy drip, right? Typically with spray paint, you don't want it to drip. But with these, I really like to make them drip. And I'm going to dress later like how heavy-handed that looks. It's for a reason. And the reason is not on this video, right? To watch it in this like, you know, bright lighting, flat like this. And here's the bloody hand. If you watch my channel, you know I can't not do the bloody hand when I'm weathering. 
<laughs> and if you heard this a million times, forgive me. But it's I just have this idea where you know the person, the actor, cut their hand, and they had to keep working. And then after they were done, they were like, "Oh, let's get rid of that blood." So there it is, in the flat light, right? You see how heavy-handed that is. It's almost theatrical, like for on stage. But the camera will read this differently. And then there it is. And then now let's look at it in like some green lighting. A lot of that goes away, right? So this is exaggerated. Um, it wouldn't be just green like this. But it's just to kind of demonstrate that like all that weathering is not going to be seen the way you just saw it in the build video. But yeah, I'm glad I'm glad I went on this journey. I'm happy with this. It's gonna be cool in the film. <laughs> Look at that, it came out great. And it's filthy. Now on a serious note, I purposely took a little bit more time uh, for this outro and did a little bit more of a cinematic lighting. And you know, you'll notice, I just you know wanna drive home this point. Like you'll notice in the actual video, when I'm just videotaping the building, right? The behind the scenes, and I'm I'm showing you this is what it looks like. That weathering looks really heavy handed and it just kind of looks like there's a mess. But more with cinematic sort of detailed lighting, you can see how it just sort of shows the age, but it's not as sort of in your face when you just see it clearly on video without cinematic lighting. So hopefully that helps to illustrate that, right? And those backlights in the background just going beep, 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 beep. None of this is gonna be, we're staring right at it. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed this build. And again, um, what I love about sharing these uh, behind the scenes with you is that at some point in the not so distant future, you'll see this in one of my, or my next short film, because I'm getting really close. So as always, hope you found this interesting. And just remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs> well, let's kick it to the Avatar. Hey, I'm just the Avatar, but you might want to check out this video, maybe that video. For sure, subscribe if you haven't, and check out the merch. Buy some merch, that really helps. But hey, what do I know? I'm just the Avatar. Ha <laughs> ha!